this. I'm going to wrap it up pretty soon. Either night, or won't night, but maybe next night or the next night. Because I'm going to take it to the final step. And uh, that step is the city of Jerusalem. There are a lot of signs of the end of time in the world. And I've been over every one of them with you so many times, you ought to know them by heart. But the one that I've talked the least about for all these years I've been here is the place that the city of Jerusalem has as a sign for the end of time. All this mess that is going on over there, do not think this is by accident. This is a real thing. We may be seeing the greatest preview of the end of time that you've ever seen when you look at Jerusalem. Jesus said, keep your eye on Jerusalem. So tonight I'll start a little mini-series on Jerusalem. And so we invite you to come 6 o'clock and uh, be with us for that. Uh, Dwight wanted to have a a Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting right after service this morning, right after church this morning, back uh, in the room here. Uh, any other announcements that anybody needs to, to make? All right, if not, let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for the privilege. And God, it is a privilege to come to church. Uh, I'm afraid there's a day coming when that privilege may be taken away from us. But God, I thank you that you're still in control. God, we ain't worrying about that stuff. God, we just want to love you today and praise you and thank you for all you've done. God, you're a gracious and a good God. And God, you provide everything that you ever need because you said you would. And God, as we come today in this church building to worship, we would see Jesus today. That's what the, the goal is, to see Jesus in the world that we live in today. God, my prayer is if there's anybody here that, Lord, may need to meet Jesus, God, may this be the day. God, if there's someone here, like many of these people that we talk about in this chapter of faith in the book of Hebrews, that needs a special touch from God in their life, like all these people did, that, God, they may get that today in this place through the Holy Spirit. God, we love you. We thank you for every prayer you always answer. And every blessing you always give. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mimi's going to come and, and lead us in our opening hymn, Count Your Many Blessings.
Thank you, church. Count our blessings and see what God has done. This week, God has been good to us. Today, God is good to us. We woke up, we had clothes to put on, we had a breakfast to eat, and we had a church to come to. You know how many people in the world cannot say that today. So thank you, God, for all the blessings that you give us. All right. I'm ready for my little boys and girls to come on up here. All of them, come on up here. All my little boys and girls. Well, hello. The Bible says two's better than one. You know that. That's what it says. Two is better than one. So I want to tell you a story about Jesus and his disciples. Anybody know what disciples were? Disciples were followers of, of Jesus. Now, what he had told them and what he did was he would go around all the country telling people about himself, about Jesus. His disciples would go with him, and they would do, help him do the miracles, and they would help him tell people about Jesus. One day, as he is and his disciples were, were traveling, he come into a place called Samaria. Now, you, you might not understand this, but Samaria was filled mostly with Gentiles. Jews did not like them. And so they had a very bad relationship between them. Two different people, and they just didn't like each other. So it's very rare for, for people to, that are Jews to go to that place. But Jesus goes there. Why? Because he loves everybody, don't he? He don't care whether you Jew or whether you Gentile. So he goes there. He gets outside the city. He's a little bit tired. So he looks at his disciples, and he tells his disciples, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go into the city, get us some food and some stuff to eat and drink, and I'm going to sit here by this well and wait, and y'all bring it back to me. So they leave, and they go into the city of Samaria. Well, while Jesus is sitting by the well, somebody comes to the well. And it is a lady. And when she comes to that well, she's not used to somebody being at that well when she gets there because she came in the middle of the day. Most people that went to that well to get water either came early in the morning or late in the afternoon. She didn't want to get in the crowd. She didn't want to talk to a lot of people. There's some things in her life she was embarrassed about. So she goes in the middle of the day when there's nobody there. So when she walks around and she comes up, she sees a man. She don't know who he is. He's sitting over there by the well. Now, Jesus says to her, Could you give me a drink of water? Well, that shocked her. You know why? Because men did not talk to ladies in public back then. She had never had a man just to speak to her like that. And Jesus asked her, can you take that, that jug you got and, and uh, draw me some water uh, out of that well? She didn't know what to do. So she looks at Jesus in this, and she is surprised at what has happened here. And he says, please. She was surprised by the talking to him and the request that he had for her to give him water. So Jesus just plainly says, 
Would you please do that for me? Would you please draw me some water? Now, why do you think that Jesus did something that nobody else had done to her? Talk to her. You know why? There's a song that says, Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red or yellow, black or white, all are precious in his sight. Other folks did not care for this lady because of her past. Jesus loved her in spite of her past. And that's the way Jesus loves everybody. And he was wanting to show her that somebody cared for her. He's wanting to show her that somebody loved her. And he knew that when she came and gave him that water, that her life was about to change. She didn't know it, but he knew it. And so she does what he asks and gets him some water. Now next week, what a time they have when he bring, she brings him that water. And what a time she has when she has what, hears what Jesus has to say to her. Changes her life forever. And that's what Jesus does. He loves you. He cares for you. He changes your life forever. Right? Okay. Father, I thank you that you love, as that song said, the little children. God, I thank you love of us older children. God, I'm thankful that you love everybody. And the Bible told me that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's little boys and girls, grown men and women, that believeth in him should never perish but have everlasting life. That lady at that well was going to experience that First hand. So, God, I pray as I talk to these two girls that as they go through life, that they will show people kindness. And I pray that people will show them kindness because, God, that's what you would have us all to do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. Uh oh. Easter Bun doesn't come fill my bucket up again. Yep, showed up this week. Look at that. All kind of stuff in there. Okay, good. All right. Okay, you got them? All right. Y'all want to go with Miss Katie here? Give her some of your candy. She, y'all, y'all, there you go. There you go. This time we're going to have our offertory prayer, and then we're going to have him, blessed be the name, and our ushers will come and take up the offering. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the blessed privilege of being here. God, uh, now as we get into the, the part of the, the worship service, God, I pray that, Lord, you would be with us here. And I pray, dear God, that the Holy Spirit of God would fill this place. So, Lord, I just pray now as we take up the offering that, God, you would bless it. God, that we would use it wisely and use it to bring you glory. Thank you, God, for all the blessings you give us. And, Lord, we want to bless you with what we give now. May we touch people's lives. May people be saved. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Mimi, you come and lead us in our offertory hymn. Our ushers will come and, and take up the offering.
Thank you, Mimi. At this time, we're going to um, have our special music, and uh, Mandy is going to come and, and share with us this morning.
That is so true. Sometimes our mercies are disguised. And we don't ever really know we got them until a little later on. That's the way God works. If you have your Bibles today, and I hope you do, and bring your Bible with you to the house of the Lord, and so y'all can be sure I'm not making mistakes up here. And uh, call me out if I do after church. But, but anyway... If you have your Bibles, turn with we're, we're in this faith chapter, and I have, I'm having a hard time getting out of it because uh, in this great Heroes of the Bible chapter, it's just real difficult to move real fast when all these names that we see in here were people that affected the world, people that affected the Jews, the folks in the Middle East. That's who these people are. Now, they're not well known, and they're not taught in school. But these are some of the greatest people that ever lived that brought society into a knowledge of God that nobody else did. And so there's several things that I want to talk to you about tonight or this morning. I want you just to, to read with me. Now, y'all know how far I'll get with this. How long did I preach on Moses? Six weeks? I mean, Abraham? Something like that. Verse 20, if you have your Bible. 11th chapter, by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the things to come. And by faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. And by faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Let's pray. Father, I just want to say thank you for this holy word. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit will give me the things that I need to say about it today. God, that we might remember this is holy. This is your letter to us. And God, help us to try to explain it as best we can, and that somebody's heart might be touched today that they might become that same kind of person of faith. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. When we look at these verses, what you find in all of this chapter, many different names of people, but they all had one thing in common. They all lived by faith. Every one of them lived by faith. It also tells us, and I preach this, that they all died in their faith. If your name was written in this chapter, that's a guarantee you went to heaven right there, buddy. Let me tell you that right now. These people were that great. You see, when you know Jesus, let me just kind of just speak to my heart to you this morning a little bit. Jesus Christ touches every part of my life. He knew me before I was ever put in my mother's womb. Amen. Had it not been for Jesus, I would not be here today, neither would any of you. But Jesus and God saw the necessity of letting us be born into this world. Not only letting us be born into this world, but putting us in here for such a time as we live in today. That's when we were born. That's when God wanted us to be born. So he was with me in my past before. He was also with me in the past of my life after I was born and lived. Every teenager, everybody grows, we're born, we age the same way aging is. But we treat, try, your life is not like my life was as I grew up, and mine's not like yours. But the one thing that is common for us is that the God of glory that created us can take care of the past that we've had in our life. The God that created us forgives us of those things 
that we've done. And if you're like me, I've needed a lot of forgiveness in my life. I've needed a lot of grace. Not for my present as much as I have my past, even though I do need some for my present every once in a while. But not only did he knew me before I was conceived, and not only did he walk me as I started my walk on this earth, not only did he put away my sins, but he walks with me right now. There's a different feeling about life and living and the future when you know Jesus is with you. Many people in this world are afraid. I hear it every day on the news. People are afraid, afraid. But if you're a child of God, there should be no fear there. There should be no fear. Because he said that he walks with me, and if life gets so I can't walk, he says that he will pick me up and he'll carry me. So I don't know how long I'm going to be here or how long you're going to be here. But this I do know. I don't want to walk through this life alone without Jesus Christ. I want him to be that ever-present one that is with me. So if I wake up tomorrow and I get the phone call and my bottom falls out, he'll say, I'll take care of you, Jimmy. You don't know what that phone call tomorrow is going to say to you. I got you, Jimmy. I got you. That's what God says. I always take them back to my old buddy Jim. When we were pastor and he was my associate pastor and stuff, and we'd have issues come up in the church, and we'd sit down, and I'd lay out and talk to him about what was going on in the church. That's what old Jim would always say. Don't worry about it, preacher, I got that. Greatest words you ever hear, preacher, I got that. Somebody's got that. Hey, Jesus says, Jimmy, don't worry, I got that. And I believe that, and I live that way. And no matter what happens, no matter how deep the water gets, no matter how much the lightning comes, my God will take care of me. I do not walk through this world by myself. So he's... He let me be born. He forgave my past. And now he walks with me every step I take. He was in the car with me when I drove to church this morning. He was with me when I taught Sunday school this morning. He is a daily experience in my life. But now... He will also be my future in my life. Jesus promised me a mansion. Jesus promised me that he would take me away from here and that one day we would walk up into glory on those streets of gold and, and see the angels and, and see these, these people that we've talked about we can look them face to face. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joe. One day you'll be in their presence. And you may say, well, you know, Jimmy was right when he told us about that. My future. There is no future that anyone wants without Jesus. I'm going to tell you that right now. Something I don't talk about probably near much because it makes some people mad. But when I look at these people in this scripture here, let's understand one thing. Everybody that has lived or is living now or will live all have a future. You got a future. I got a future. Them people that are riding up and down that road and don't give a toodly hoot about this church, they got a future. Them people that murder and steal and rob and do all of those things that we see in the world, they got a future. But they don't want to talk about it. But the thing that has brought me thus far and will carry me through, that God has taken me this far for all these years, and the best is yet to come. 
God's been good, folks. We sing a song, count your blessings. Ain't no way I can count that high. I told people, I said, I'll never be a rich man. I don't know how to count enough money to get rich. But God has supplied every need I ever had in my life. My wife, my kids, my family, we've never gone. And the Bible said, I've never seen God's people get forsaken like that. And I know that one day, that because we trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, and we went to a church and we come down and we ask Him to forgive us of our sins, folks, our future was settled then. Everybody's got a future. Dwight, you and me remember that. I wish we had that CD with that song on it says, Everybody's Got to Talk to God. We showed it up here one night. See, that's the destination of everybody. Whether they done died and gone to hell, whether they have done died and gone to heaven, don't matter. Or whether they go die and go to hell or go to heaven, everybody's got to go see Jesus. That's a point which you cannot, you got to make that point. And you call, can't call in and say, I need to cancel that. That don't work with God. There's a point in time and some point in place. You can't say, I got to work late today. Or I got to go watch my kids' ball game today. Where in time, and God's got that time set for you now. He said He knew you from beginning to end. Only God knows that. So I'm thankful for what He's done. I'm thankful for the wonderful future that I have. A mother cared her. A little boy to the pet shop one day to pick him out a, a little puppy. And he walked around in there and he he looked at all the little puppies and stuff that were there. And his mom, he goes back to his mother and, and she's asking him there which puppy he wants. And of all them puppies, there was one little puppy sitting by himself, and his tail was just a wagon, sitting there just a wagon. He said, I want the one that's happy. I want the one that's got his tail wagging. That's what I want. That's what future's going to be. That's what heaven's going to be. It's going to be the happy place where we go to. You know, he said this. <laughs> this is exactly what he said when his tail was wagging. He said, Mom, I'll tell you what. I want the one with the happy ending. <laughs> that's what I want. The one with the happy ending. But everybody's got it. All these people in this chapter, I want that future that has it. I've told you many times it says they all lived by faith. That's the only reason that they're in this book. But it also says back, if you go back to the 13th chapter, a verse, I believe, that every one of them died in faith, too. Whether it be any of them we've mentioned or those we've yet got to preach, that they all died in faith. See, that is the one factor, the one factor that people struggle with, the one factor that people don't want to talk about, the one factor that nobody wants to think about is that we're all going to die one day. The only thing that will keep us from dying is if Jesus comes back and takes us home. Other than that, the Bible tells me that that is an appointed time for me and for everybody that is sitting here, everybody that is not in church, but everybody that today is breathing a breath, that is the future for them. They all die. Everyone. The Bible tells me that it is possible for a man to face that future and have no fear of it. But you better hang on to this book. And you better hang close to Jesus. And that's what we all better do. All my life, and I don't understand all God does and he don't need me to, because if I, I got to tell him what he would tell me, I'd probably forget it and miss it anyway now. 
But all my life, it said these men lived by faith and they died in faith. All of them. When I, when I read these things about that, I've heard the older preachers that used to tell me when they'd preach about a dying grace. Ever heard that term used, he had a dying grace? And when he or she come to the end of the road, they had a smile on their face. They were happy that they got there. They call that dying grace. Mr. Richard and I went and visited a man yesterday who came home from the hospital Friday. He's got the oxygen and all, and his family's going to have to move in with him to take care of him. And I think he didn't call hospice in, Mr. Richard. And he ain't going to make it. I know this man. He lives out there where we live at. And I've met and known him for 16 years. He's a great man of God. Anytime you talk to him, he talked about the Lord. And believe it or not, he, wasn't, he ain't Baptist neither. But he's a great man of God. So we went over to see him yesterday. And we stayed there, what, one hour? He's sitting up in his chair. He's got his oxygen thing on. What was the only thing he talked about? Jesus in heaven, wasn't it? That's all he wanted to talk about. He's ready to go. He's got a smile on his face. He don't know how many more days he's got left. But he said, I am ready, ready, ready. God's been good to me. I've lived 83 years old. Don't weep for me. I'm going to a better place than you could ever imagine. So anytime God gets ready to call me, I'm ready. That's what we all better be thinking about. Anytime God calls us, are we ready? Because one day, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. There's two ways that you can die. You can die in faith, or you can die out of faith. In faith, and you put your trust in the Lord Jesus, you go to heaven. If you die out of faith, your sins will take you to a place that is called hell. So, there's a lot of questions about dying. And I knew this is not a message that everybody likes to hear, and I don't like preaching a lot, but let's, let's, let's be real today. We're talking about dead people here and how they die. That's the one subject that people say, I want to talk about. That's the one subject that when you, you see people about that and the questions they ask. How do you think I'm going to die? Man, they don't nobody know how you're going to die but God. So when? You might live to be 100. I don't know that. Many of us would probably live longer than we thought we would. When I got to 50, I thought I made it. My daddy died at 49, and I kept saying, Lord, I just want to live to be old my daddy was. I just want to live to be old my daddy was. And God granted that. Now I'm older than my mama was. God has been good. But I still got the same thing ahead that they had. Either coming to get me or take me home, whatever happens. Folks, y'all hear me say this. And when, if the world out there would hear me say this, they say, that's one of the biggest nuts I've ever seen. But death is the greatest thing that will ever happen to a child of God. I don't care if you're richer than whoever the richest man is. And you own more lands and more stocks and more this or another. In God's eyes, you're a poor man. But if you've got Jesus in your heart and you know Jesus... The Bible says you're rich beyond what you know. 
You're richer than the richest man. I don't care. I don't know about these trillionaires and billionaires. I don't know how many of them saved or ain't. I hope they all are. But I always go back to that old saying I was brought up with. Ain't no Wells Fargo truck going to follow you up in heaven. Whatever you got, somebody else is going to enjoy that, buddy. That's why I spend all I get. I get what I get, and I spend what I get. Why? I don't want everybody else to get what I got. They ain't work like I worked. And why am I telling the truth? Now, if there's anything left, they can have it. But I ain't looking for it to be much, because I ain't going lacking so somebody else can get something. I'm going to tell you that right now. I ain't got too old for that. So I pretty much do what I want to do because I know that day's coming and somebody else is going to enjoy everything I ever had. But I won't care about that because they'll never have what I got if that's all they want. You know what the Bible says? Precious in the sight of God is the death of one of his saints. Our Sunday school lesson today Talked about the saints. Saints. Saints are people who love God, been saved, serve God. Every one of you in here that is a child of God, been saved, and you want your life to, to honor God and live for God, the Bible says you're a saint. I preached this many years ago about saints. It wasn't this message, but I was talking about saints in my former church. I remember Robert Christmas walking out that door. And I was shaking his hand, and he said, Call me St. Robbie. You remember that? Call me St. Robbie now. That's just one of my memories of Robbie, St. Robbie. There. Now, I told my Sunday school class the Catholic Church got a different idea about a saint. In order to be a saint in the Catholic Church, you've got to be been dead for a while. And then you have to have done a miracle somewhere along the way. And if they can vouch that you did that, then they'll make you a saint. But God said, those that believe in him and trust him and are his children going to heaven and serve him, that they're saints in his eyes. So we're all saints that love Jesus, been saved and washed in the blood. We're all there. One of the greatest reminders of this for me personally. Let me tell you something about dying today. Have you ever thought what people are going to say about you when you're gone? People really know you. What they go say when they tell the truth about you. We should all hope that our death when it comes could be a testimony that people would say he lived by the grace of God and trusted his life to him with everything. If that could be said when we're gone, that's a wonderful thing. One of the great testimonies, and I've, I've shared this with you. I had a man that he used to work in the bar rooms, different places, and he got saved. He quit working there. Started going to a church that where a preacher friend of mine and home preached at. In his life, the Lord called him into the ministry. And the man that owned the bar or worked in the bar, I can't remember which, he became a preacher. 
He became a gospel singer. I've got his CDs at my house and in the car. In his early 40s, he got a brain tumor. Just out of nowhere, his mind, I think he was 42, 43 years old, somewhere along in there. He's up in the hospital up in Charlotte. I hope I, I don't remember a lot of names or a lot of things, but I tell you, I hope God don't let her forget me, forget this. I went up there to see him one day. And I walked into the room, and they had him hooked up to all this stuff, and my head was all shaved off, and he, could barely, he couldn't talk too much. But he had a smile on his face. I said, Brother Pat, I'm praying for you. You know what he told me? This is all good. I'm ready to go to the other side. Laying there, dying, he looked at me and said, I'm ready to go to the other side. Don't worry about me. This is all good. Same thing the fellow told us yesterday, wasn't Mr. Richard? It's all good. Is it all good? That's what we need to think about today. All these men died. They all lived in faith. All of these died. In faith, when you look at this, when you look at these lives, and I didn't get to any of them three men, but when we look at them and we get to them, we'll find out that that is the way they lived and the way that they died. When I read you the scripture about Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, now you want you to think about this. There's hardly no three men in the Bible that's more different than these three men were. But yet, after all of that, they faced different problems in their life. They had different heartaches in their life. They had death come into their families. They had everything. But they had a different life. They all love God, they serve God, but life was better to some, seemed like no. And that's hard to figure, isn't it, sometimes? When it's like those people don't care about God, get good, and we get all the heartache. But it happens. It's okay. But these three men were very, very different in all their lives. But they had one thing in common. One thing. And it was the way that they faced death. They all died. That's what we just talked about. It was the way that they faced death when they left this world. And I'm going to talk about their kind of faith next Sunday. But I just want to say to you in, in closing tonight, now I stood here and in my former church and made this statement. When I preached the funeral of men and women of God that have gone on to meet God, you can always go to this chapter and you can find something good to preach. I'm going to tell you that right now. I've said... And you've heard me say it probably hundreds of times, and probably again if I stay here that long. The greatest word in the Bible is faith. It says that every one of these men and women died in faith. You only go to heaven if you die in faith. The Bible says that it is impossible for a man to please God without faith. The Bible says that by grace you're saved through faith. That it's not a gift. It comes by faith. 
Everybody that is in heaven today got there because they had faith in the Holy God. And everybody that's going to leave from this day on, tomorrow, whenever, they're only going to get there if they have faith in God. It's impossible to get there without that. That's why God put this chapter in the Bible. Gave us all these people that we already know. They lived in faith. And because they live in faith, they can die in faith. So we have our hymn of invitation today. Now I'm going to get into these three men next Sunday. But I just want to tell you the one thing that they all had in common. They had the same thing in common that you and I have in common today. You know that? They were born and they got to die. They were born and they died. I was born, and one day, death will be on my doorstep unless the Lord comes back and that trumpet sounds and we takes us on out of here. That's what I'm really looking forward to. But I don't really care. As long as my reservation has been made. Whether he calls me up or whether I quit breathing, but as long as that reservation is made, and I walk up there, St. Peter opens them pearly gates and says, Come on in, Jimmy. God's waiting on you. Jesus wants to talk to you. Whoa, what a day, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one that saved me by his grace. What a day, glorious day. That will be. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am today. But if for some reason, and this is, this is the real deal here now. You may be here and say, Preacher, I don't know if I'm looking for it quite as much as you are. Maybe I got a little bit of hesitation. God takes care of that. You can, the Bible says that if you accept Jesus Christ, that God writes your name down in the Lamb's book of life, up in glory. And by the way, the only people who get to heaven are those that have gotten their name in that book. How do you get it in that book? You come, listen to this now. This ain't hard. Get this right. I, I, my heart breaks. All you have to do is ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Believe in your heart that he is God's son. Repent of those sins and say, I'm going to let you be Lord of my life. And mean it with your heart. If you do that, you'll be as happy as I am. You'll be as happy as I am. The day that the Lord saved me. Father, as we come to this invitation time, God, I thank you for amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. I thank you, God, that I don't know how many more steps I'll take or how many more breaths I'll breathe. But either way, Lord, it's going to be good. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that dying peace that I talked about. That God, as my preacher friend Pat said, don't worry about me. I'm almost well. I'm almost well. God bless him. Because he had a relationship where God changed his life. He met Jesus. And I know, and I know, and I know, God, as hard as we're working and preaching and the Holy Spirit is moving to try to get that one person to step out and just say, let's get it right. The devil's working just as hard. 
to tell him don't go. To tell her, don't listen to what he says. You go live to be a hundred. I'll come back tonight. There won't be as many people there tonight. Or Wednesday night. Lord, don't let the devil kick him out of here. And let the Holy Spirit flood. Because deep down in my heart, as I was in their place one time, I believe there's somebody in here, Lord, today, among this many people, that says, I want to know that I know that I know that they might come down and say, let's do it, preacher. But those that are here visiting, God bless them. They want to join a church, God bless them. God, may the Spirit move now and touch people's hearts. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hymn number 305. Would you please just think a minute, stand with us? I believe there's somebody here that God might be saying to you, the day's your day. Go down there and let that preacher just love on you. Let him help you. Decide today to follow Jesus. Today. Nobody else comes with me. I'm going to go. And that's the way you're looking at it. Thank you so much. Would you be seated for just a moment, please?